but you can never, 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 never tie one up with it. But it is a very good tool to use to help soften one that is dragging you around. And so I really stress that a horse minds. I use a lot of tools that other people don't. Every horse I own is hollow broke. And they go, why? I don't like them. Well, number one, I just, I done a movie called Flicka. We have 19 of my horses standing in a pasture behind the actor. They do three different angles of it. And they said, we can't have them horses moving from one hay pile to the next. It throws it all off. What can you do? I walked out and I hobbled 19 of them. They all stood on the same hay pile for three and a half hours. And instead of them putting hay down there and walking from one hay pile to the other and moving it, now the shot not matching. We just hobbled it and they stood right there. Because they were all hobble broke. But of the 48 head of horses on that job, only 19 of them were hobble broke because they belonged to me. It is a very good tool to use correctly, but like any tool, you give a heart surgeon a scalpel, it is a wonderful, wonderful tool. Give that same scalpel to Jeffrey Dahmer, and it's not a great tool. So I teach them all from day one to hobble. And I put them on him, and I will let him move those hips a little bit. But let him find those hobbles. If he gets ignorant, I can bump that war bridle and say no, and I can stop it. But he understands that he can move softly and quietly, but he is restrained. Patience is a virtue. In the movie bu business, I must have because in the movie business I have had to stand on marks for eight and nine hours of doing dialogue. You try to keep your horse standing on the same mark and if he shifts his weight like this, they go, the horse off the mark. No, he's not. He shifted his weight because he's tired. And I say, you have to open the camera up a little bit and give me a little bit of room. He will not stand 100% static. He is not a monkey. He is a horse. He is a live animal. So at times, it's very hard. But if I have horses giving me problems, I can step up there and put hobbles on and go, oh, okay, you're supposed to stand here. And they stand there. Whether it's an hour or it's eight hours. Okay, that's what the boss wants, what we do. So that is why each and everything I do has been developed through 31 years in the movie business and being raised in the ranch country on bad horses. I was born and raised on Hancock's at the top. They'll buck you off every given morning. And so when I done Horse Whisper, I went, you know, this may help horsemen. And it didn't. It showed me lots of guys that come out of the woodwork claim to be horse whisperers. And my favorite saying is when he says he's a horse whisperer, the first thing is a liar. Because there is nobody, nobody, and everybody at this clinic, this fair, can whisper in a horse's ear and get him to do anything. There are great, great horses that spend their lives studying horses to become better horsemen. They study every day of their life to become better horsemen. But there's none of us, including myself, that can whisper in a horse's ear to get him to do anything. There are horsemen, Teddy Robinson, Ryan Klimke, Bob Allen, that has spent their lives to become better horsemen. You roll every one of us, including myself, the Clintonitians into one ball, they could not carry water to Glenn Randall Sr. Glenn Randall Sr. trained all the horses for Ben Hur, all the horses for Roy Rogers, the last horse for auction, Rex Allen, most all the singing cowboys. Why? Because he was one of the greatest trainers Hollywood ever seen. He accomplished things with horses that all of us Clintonitians, if we wish to be a thousand, will never accomplish. He taught Trigger to empty out and drain out on command. And people have said, oh, I don't believe that. He said, fine, go read Roy Rogers' book, any book. But he taught him to do that so they could take Trigger into hospitals, children's homes and stuff, and he wouldn't make a mess. Glenn spent one year in the barn with Trigger to teach it to him. So that's why I say there'll never be another Glenn Randall. I was with him 15 years, and I don't know what he had that little finger. I wish I did because he was a master horseman.
he rode 365 days of the year. We took a half a day off for Christmas, a half a day off for Thanksgiving. We took two hours off for the Preakness, the Belmont, and the Derby. The rest of the time we rode horse. He showed up at the barn at 7 o'clock and said, Son, get one saddle, let's go. And we rode all day long. We stayed until we're done. What time? We got done. I've been round with, with him. We went in there at 9 o'clock in the morning. We come out at 2.30 the next morning. But we stay until he got what he wanted. He was a master horseman, but he had patience in the rails I've ever seen. He was a master, master horseman. This horse, when we got him, not only would he buck, he would go over backwards. He would kick you with both hind legs. He knew every dirty trick in the book. He got him now. And that's why I've been out this 31 years. I know what works. I've done the movie Horse Whisper. It took one horse training. It took three technical riders. It took one horse training. I'm going to open it up to questions. Anybody's got any questions? The camel scratch. I haven't got it on video yet. Neither one of these have it on them. Uh, it's a simple thing. It's a great thing to help stretch them through the shoulders.